Sufre, Mr. Pius Gangadin. As you know, um, the Carolet model is based upon working with municipalities to strengthen MSMEs. In our case here, we've been extremely fortunate to have had a predecessor mayor before June the 6th in the person of Mr. Daniel Bob, who really embraced this project and gave it much time and effort. What happened on the 6th of June? Um, seismic though the changes may be, it didn't change anything because Pius fitted right into it and as a mayor he's put all his efforts into it and so I'd like us to put our hands together for Mr. Gangadin for his efforts. Thank you. Honorable Leonard Matut, Senator Nolan Cox from the Grenada Parliament, Mistress Marion Venolova, Carrie-led Project Director, Mr. Felix Finistier, Carrie-led OECS Project Coordinator, Ms. Dolores Ant, Carrie-led Project Administrator, Olaf Fontenelle, Mayor Denbo Bulan, Viewfort Constituency Council, Councillors of the Sufre Constituency Council, Executive Director of the Social Development Fund, Mr. Alison Mafre, Mandy St. Rose, Representative for GIZ, Representative of TVET, Local Government Officer, Ms. Justin Charles, Ms. Danelli Estava, Social Transformation Officer, Karaoke and P.T. Matnik, Grenada Representatives, Portsmouth Dominica Representatives, Mr. Dominic Prosper, Forsyth Credit Union, 
Mr. Johnson Simon, Community Development Officer from the Sufra Regional Development Foundation, representatives from the Sufra Regional Development Foundation, and we welcome Honorable Ira Stanislaus, Parliamentary Representative. Thanks for coming. Mrs. Prosper, Fossejac Development Committee, Mr. Zakias Joseph, representative of the Sufra Fossejac Development Committee, Mrs. Pauline Prosper, representative of the Fossejac Development Committee, Ms. Utalia Filgens, consultant, Mr. Melvin Edwards, evaluator, Mr. Peter Lord, consultant, Mr. Neil Vodant, proprietor of Grizzly Business Directory, representatives from Bellevue Farmers, representative from St. Lucia Business Center, representative from the Ministry of Agriculture, Mr. Titus Atanas, contractor, directors and staff of Rainforest Foods, Directors and staff of Fruta Jeunesse, Director and staff of Jaco Products, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my great pleasure to welcome you here this afternoon to celebrate the completion and opening of the Fossejac Agro-Processing Center. I am wondering if this date was strategically chosen with today being celebrated as International Women's Day and knowing that the operators of this facility are predominantly women. I am extremely proud to welcome you all to a constituency which is often referred to as the breadbasket of St. Lucia. And what we are doing today gives added credence to the saying. A special welcome to our regional counterparts who are also recipients from this phase of this carrier project. I'm hoping as you have shared your experiences with us that it has been equally a time of learning for you. We are delighted that the Constituency Council headed this initiative. I would like to acknowledge the effort of the previous mayor and council for the involvement for the introduction of this project. With the commercialization of the Fossejac Agro-Processing Center, we can truly say that we as a constituency is proportionately contributing to the nation's economic output. Fossejac has proven to be very resilient amid the effects of climate change and the impact of natural disaster specifically to its agricultural landscape. Nonetheless, the residents continue to persevere and now go in a step further in the processing of agricultural produce. This agro-processing center is another step in strengthening this community. The completed space will house three groups, namely the rainforest foods which has formed a few years ago and the story behind its humble beginning is very touching. This new facility will see the genesis of two other groups in fruta genes and in English terms means young fruits. This group will give you all the natural fruit flavored smoothie and we'll see also see the formation of Jaco foods to keep your food tasted finger licking with rice seasoning ingredients. I want to start the economic activity at the facility from today. So I'm hoping before everyone leaves it that they're able to purchase something from Jaco Foods or Fruta Genes who have products already on sale. To guarantee a success story of this carrier project, it requires that the operators of the facility have common understanding and goals. The operators will be sharing some mutual space and there is need for good cooperation and harmonization amongst all. This facility also provides a vital opportunity to further reduce unemployment within the Fossejac area and to continue foster innovative energies. This carrier project through the Federation of Canadian Municipalities has shown us effective, how effective local authorities can, can be when empowered. It is an example for our own leaders in the need to give full support to such vested initiatives to boost the economic development through local authorities. Whilst it's not my duty to give the vote of funds, I would like to make a special request to express my gratitude on behalf of everyone who strategized and implemented this project. Special mention to Mrs. Marion Villanova, Mr. Felix Finistier, and Ms. Dolores Hunt. Your time and efforts have been incalculable and will prove to be the lifeblood of this center. I want to assure you that your money has been put to optimal use both in human resource capacity building and the refurbished structure. It's my hope 
that more partnerships will continue in the near future. It's now our responsibility as a council, as a management committee, and a community to ensure the viability and sustainability of this facility. To everyone who have taken this trip down here today, you are more than welcome to stay. We can boast of the world's five top five-star hotels, and we can boast of the world's renowned natural attraction. So no need to rush back up to Castries. You can stay over. We have enough accommodation for you. I wish everyone an enjoyable and gratifying opening of this facility. And it's my hope that this ceremony will be an inspiration for all to open up more ventures like this. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for a very inspiring um, speech. But, um, but we need to set the record straight a little because it is not carried alone. This is a partnership, and we in Carried and LED is about partnerships. And so we have another funding partner, so we should not only say Carried. When you see the sign later, you will see that the CATS GTZ funded by the Germans did make a significant contribution to this I mean, project. So let's put our hands together for Ms. Mandy St. Rose, the liaison officer for the GIZ CATS project. I should probably start off by giving you some background into um, what our role was in the project. So I'm representing the CATS program. So the CATS program is a program that's funded by the German Agency for International Cooperation and the implementing agency within the Caribbean, within CARICOM, is uh, CAFA, which is the Caribbean Public Health Agency, and we're working through the Environmental Health Department of CAFA. So um, we work within eight different states or eight different territories within CARICOM. We're in Dominica, St. Lucia, Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Kitts. Guyana, Jamaica, and Belize. Um, so within each of these countries, we're trying to promote the ridge to reef concept, whereby whatever happens on the, on the ridge, which is on the land, has an effect on whatever happens in the sea or the quality of the sea. So we support, we provide technical support and resource support to different groups in those countries. So in St. Lucia, our three groups, the three groups we worked with during the first chapter of our project were the Bellevue Farmers Cooperative, the Sufre Marine Management um, Association, and also uh, the Fossil Jacques Development Committee. Um, reason being because our, our focus is on different watersheds. So within St. Lucia, our focus watershed was the Sufre watershed. So we would naturally work with groups within, within that watershed. Um, one of our areas of interest is livelihoods and forming sustainable linkages between our partners. So in our um, liaising with the Fossil Jacques Development Committee, we identified the need not only for employment among um, persons within the community, but also um, the establishment of a link between uh, them as a partner and also the Bellevue Farmers Cooperative. So they, after much brainstorming, the idea was to uh, have the formation of an agro-processing group which would utilize products from the Bellevue Farmers Cooperative. So out of this came the Jaco, the Jaco Foods um, agro-processing group. Um, so what we did was we provided them with financing to assist them with training, with uh, preparation of their business plans, and then also some resource support, as in equipment and, and those types of things. And coincidentally, happily, we, well, they were also, um, the timing of, of our intervention was perfectly, uh, how would I put it? It was perfectly timed that Carrie Led also came around with the agro-processing uh, initiative, so everything just, fitted nicely. So they, they had the group, then we had Carrie Led also funding within the same area, so everything was able to, to mesh nicely. So we're very pleased that we were able to work together with another funding partner on this project, and we, um, we look forward to some very sustainable businesses 
Um, we look forward to, to, yes, we know we're three different groups working within one area, so we look forward to having a greater sense of unity, not only within the groups, but also within the community itself. And we also look forward to there being within the facilities management plan some sort of, um, how would I put it, environmental consideration when it would come to recycling of their waste, when it would come to energy utilization, and also um, incorporating uh, environmentally, um, how would I put it, safe produce, organic produce, preferably within their, their products. So. Um, I wish you all all the best, members of the different groups, and here's to much success um, in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Um, this is very consistent with what we at Carada try to do, which is to have partnerships, have as many of the funders come so we could collaborate and put everything into the pot instead of being divided all over the place. It gives me great pleasure now to call upon Mrs. Marion Villanueva, the program director for Caroled to um, say a few words. In terms of background, like Mandy was was explaining on on her side, on our side in Caroled, we, as Felix was mentioning, this is about local government and partnerships that local authorities uh, undertake in order to get the job done of of um, facilitating economic development in their localities. And, and what we have uh, assisted with doing, aside from this, is to help in developing the strategic plan, the led local economic development strategic plan that was designed, that was developed, the vision for um, Souffrir, Font Saint-Jacques, and so on. And this is only one of the many things that they wanted to do. There was stuff around tourism and mainly around agriculture. So. I'm very pleased to be here and to see the, the results, or this is only the beginning of the results, but to see the results of all that hard work. Um, I must say that without all the women that were involved in, in getting this going, perhaps uh, this would not have ha happened. And uh, congratulations to the women in uh, this project. I would like to commend a few people, and, and um, I, I know Mayor Gangadeen was talking about Mayor Bob and the, the council, but all, Mayor Gangadeen, I think you, the two of you, uh, the seamless uh, um, transfer and, and sort of handing over from Mayor Bob to you, um, Mayor Gangadeen, is also what, what we talk about in terms of good local government and how politics doesn't get in the way that it's really about what's best for the community and if the project or the activity makes sense, then this is what needs to happen. So congratulations to you. Um, I also want to commend all the different groups. And this is not easy. You have so many that have Bellevue, uh, Souffrir Foundation, FSJ Development Committee, Rainforest Foods, Frutagenet, Jaco Products, you know, and the, and the uh, local government. So these are people or, or groups with different interests that have come together and have stuck it out. And I think that is something that also uh, we should commend. And I would challenge you all to continue to, to, to do work uh, as, as one. Um, yes, uh, you all have different uh, interests and are coming from different backgrounds. But this agro-processing center is one resource that is uh, tying you all together that needs to be managed carefully and in an environmentally friendly manner. So this is something that that management committee that I believe the mayor is, is chair of, but um, equally the rest of the members of, of that committee. So um, congratulations and I look forward to hearing more about that. And I, all, I know we said earlier that we're just, um, that this is the sort of culminating activity or or the result, but really this is, I feel this is just the beginning because what it's about is creating changes and differences in the lives of the people who are benefiting from, from the agro-processing center, the, you know, the three groups that are made up of a lot of women and their families and how this will grow that it, so that it doesn't just remain those uh, three groups that benefit, but the community of Fonse Jacques and the people of Fonse Jacques and, and Souffrir and, 
Um, so it will really continue. And that's what uh, local economic development is about. So congratulations, and we will keep on top, on track, and wondering and, and uh, sort of checking up from time and again on, on how things are going, perhaps through you, Mayor, or through Felix, but we'll find a way to hear more about the work that you're doing and the results that are coming out of this project. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. At this point, we'd like to call upon the Honorable um, Herod Stanislaus, your very good parliamentary representative, to say a few words. Thank you, Minister. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to be present here today to witness the official opening of this agro-processing plant in Fossa Jacques. And as the parliamentary representative, I give my full support to this facility. This project, ladies and gentlemen, commenced before my time becoming parliamentary representative of the constituency. When I was informed of it, I had no hesitation in endorsing the project and ensuring that it came to fruition. I strongly believe that this effort will transform the community of Fonseca. It will increase domestic activity and it has the ability to grow and this will directly create a dent to the unemployment within this community. Projects and initiatives of this nature are aligned with my vision for this constituency to bolster human resource development in creativity and innovation. For Saint Jacques, ladies and gentlemen, is an integral part of my strategic plan for the economic sustainability of this constituency and its environs. It's my objective to link all the industries within this constituency for the benefit of all residents. As a government, I want to assure you that I will try my utmost best to give full support to the residents and the persons who are going to be operating at this facility. And I'm very pleased that my cabinet colleague, the Honorable Motut, is here to give support in his ministerial capacity as the Minister of Empowerment and Equity. It shows a commitment from our government to support and, and promote empowerment and well-being of its citizens. I want to personally thank the government of Canada for its continued support to this country and now directly to my constituency. I want to express my gratitude to the Carrelet project and hoping I can collaborate with you in future projects. I urge the business operators of this facility to work together to build upon this facility which has been handed over to you all. I wish you all success and a profitable outcome at this facility. I thank you. Thank you, Minister and Parliamentary Representative. It now um, gives me additional pleasure to call upon the Honorable Leonard Spider Motut. It's like this is your career, um, your career that week, yesterday morning, today, tomorrow afternoon again. So I'm sorry to take you away from Grizzly so often, but welcome to Sufre, my friend. Let me begin by saying that it is for me a pleasure to be here to mark the, the official launching of the Francais Jacques, is it the Francais Jacques Agro Processing first, um, Center? For me, this is a celebration in itself of what can happen as a result of decentralization, as a result of cooperation among various agencies, and indeed what can happen as a result of human capac resource capacity building at the local level. And with respect to the decentraliz decentralization of services, I know you had a workshop yesterday which perhaps spoke to the benefits and the merits of decentralization. And we know that very often 
at the central government level, there is some resistance at times in ensuring that the local government is empowered to the extent where they can implement and carry out programs at the local level, sometimes even without the interference of central government. But I'm sure today's accomplishment is testimony to what can be achieved when local government councils, for example, are empowered. And I want to applaud the Council of Soufre Francais Jacques. As I've heard in the addresses earlier, uh, there was a smooth transition between the previous and now the current, and the, the program in itself was embraced by both administrations. I think that in itself is, is worthy of compliment and shows the maturity that can exist um, that sometimes people accuse us politicians of not possessing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to also say too that this is a triumph in terms of what can be done at the local level. And when we talk about local economic development, I think it is important that we recognize that capacity building at the local level is what gives rise to economic development at the local level. And I'm sure that you will see the uh, multiplier effect of this project, because while you have gone into an agricultural project, in, in effect, you have added value to your agricultural pro uh, products from the areas here in the south, as has been said before, Francais Jacques, having been dubbed the breadbasket of St. Lucia, we know that you are capable and you have proven yourself in terms of the production of food, raw food for St. Lucia, but now you have gone into the area of manufacturing where you have added value to the products that can be produced in and around Francais Jacques. And I think that in itself, again, is an e example worth emulation by the rest of St. Lucia. As we take note of what can happen in the various municipalities by the efforts of the people in the various areas, we need to ensure that we continue to take advantage of working together and forming synergies. And I want to take this opportunity once again to thank Carled, and I've heard of many other agencies such as GIZ and um, CAT, and of course the local organizations that have come together to make this project a reality. Again, like I said, that is something worth celebrating, that kind of collaboration. Um, uh, but we need to ensure that we build upon that kind of foundation and take it a step further, not just in the communities where it has been executed, but that we can share that experience with other communities to ensure that it is replicated around the island of St. Lucia in particular, and I'm sure our colleagues from the neighboring islands will take that lesson back home and share it as well. So as I said, we want to thank Carled once again for the work that they have done, and as I said yesterday, for the work that has been done through the, Canadian go uh, the, the government of Canada and its people with regard to the assistance that we as a country have received from Canada through many fora whether it be through our international airport, our education plants, our training opportunities for teachers, for public servants, and for other professionals. And of course, the other support that has been provided directly to our governments. We want to express our sincere gratitude and thanks, but I think there'll be no better testimony of our gratitude but to ensure that those projects, especially those that are being launched this week, that we demonstrate that they are successes and that they are sustained, and that the next time Ms. Villanova receives, um, visits St. Lucia, she can come on a tour of these projects and see that they are flourishing and doing well. So as I said, let us further strengthen the groups that are on the ground by demonstrating our confidence in those organizations and agencies and by giving them the mandate and space to perform their roles. As a member of government, I want to pledge our full support of this kind of approach, and I want to say that we'll take into account the need to develop and strengthen 
that kind of approach in terms of working together to confront the challenges that face us and to achieve the goals that we set for our various municipalities. For me, such a system, carefully organized and executed, is a major asset to even the parliamentary representative. And I was happy to hear your parliamentary representative here in Sufre Fozishak express his support for the project and for the approach that has been taken and that has been emphasized through the work of Carilead during the time of the project that they have launched here. It demands confidence and trust of the sitting parliamentarian. It requires the know-how and devotion of the agencies on the ground. It demands maturity and understanding of procedure and protocol by those agencies and their representatives in order to become an effective approach to development. So I ask that we continue to work together, continue to strengthen the synergies that have been formed and continue to build on the foundation that has been laid throughout the life of the Carolet Project here in St. Lucia. Once again, I would like to thank on behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia, first the government of Canada for its continued support over the years, the, contribution, the contributing municipalities of Canada Carilead and its many devoted officers and staff, the affiliate organizations and all you participating in today's exercise who, who like me, have bought, have bought into the new approach to a continued development through cooperation, collaboration, and coexistence. I thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Matut. Okay. We have three small sort of uh, opening formalities to do. So we want to involve the whole of the five persons up top, and that's what we're going to do. So GIZ is going to um, do the sort of uh, opening symbolic giving of the keys of the building to the mayor, because we, Foster Jack Development Committee is a leader, uh, I mean agency, but the management and structure is under the leadership of the local council. So Mandy, can you come take the keys and give it to the mayor? That has the first little symbolic piece. <laughs> Just a quick one person we don't want to forget because it really was great. When you get inside and you see it, is Mr. Titus Atanas, a local Foster Jack person who did a tremendous job. Um, to really transform this place, and you will see all of what is done. So to Titus, well done, and thank you. The second little symbolic thing is to call Marion and the parliamentary representative to rip off that thing there, take one side each, so we could see the plaque. Times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom. 